as we're about to discuss actually drawing a rendering of your scenic design using perspective. First, we need to talk about some of the fundamental techniques and theories of mechanical perspective. Perspective was a technique that was developed very early in history, and there were many artists very early in the Renaissance who used mechanical perspective to create drawings. Some of these techniques are still used today. Here's an example from um, Ken Adams, who is a film designer, using a single point perspective. Here's another one showing um, use of mechanical perspective to represent uh, a design in the Bravenel Hall in Salt Lake City. And here's an example of what um, SketchUp, which is a 3D program, creates using mechanical perspective within the software itself. To understand perspective, we have to think about um, how a person views an object. There's a common ground between the two of them, and there is a picture frame, or a picture plane, we would say, through which that person views the object. That picture plane is one of the terms we need to establish, because at the picture plane, we have true measurement. So we'll call the area in which the picture plane intersects the ground as the ground line. As the person looks through that picture plane into the distance, there's a horizon line way off in the distance. Please note that the horizon line is actually equivalent to that person's eye line. As they're looking straight out at the horizon line, the distance from the ground up to their eye line is actually where that horizon line is visible through the picture plane. The person is standing at a point we call the station point, SP. That is the distance the person is from the picture plane. And they're looking straight through the picture plane, looking out to the horizon. That becomes the vanishing point at which any objects will vanish into that distance. So that's kind of the sight line of that person at their station point. The object itself has dimension. As we look at any of the planes on the side of that cube, we'll note that it vanishes off to the horizon line in a different direction. So the sides all eventually go into a vanishing point left and a vanishing point right. The vanishing point right in this example is so far off on the horizon line, we actually can't see it within the picture we're looking at. If we ever want to get a true measurement of that object, we need to bring a point or one corner of that box down to the picture plane. We can slide it along its vanishing point. If we took the ground plan and divided it up into two foot segments, along its bottom line, we would then vanish every one of those off to its vanishing point. We could do the same up one side, two feet up, measuring the true height of that opening. With that in mind, let's look at a ground plan of a proscenium. There's a proscenium opening, and the red line represents the plaster line. We're going to actually use that as our picture plane. So as we draw a set behind that, we're going to use the picture plane and we'll use a center line to help determine as we view that object. So we'll find ourselves at a station point. Somewhere out in the audience, in front of the picture plane, let's place an object, that box we talked about before. It's sitting on the stage behind the picture plane. Right now we're looking at that from a bird's eye view as a ground plan. But we want to be able to draw it from the front and get an idea of what it actually looks like. So we'll use a drop point system to help us find that. First, we'll establish a ground line. There has to be a place where the box is actually sitting. This may be a little confusing, but we're actually going to draw a front view of our ground plan right on top of the other one. So don't be too confused that we're superimposing them over. We want to have some common ground to use together. I'm going to establish a horizon line. So there's my horizon line, about six feet up, about the height of a human being from the ground plan. I'm going to take just a picture of the box, so now we know how tall that box is. If we want to establish the vanishing points for this box, we draw a parallel line going through the station point, straight up until it touches the picture plane. 
Where it touches the picture plane, we will drop it down until it touches the horizon line. That will become vanishing point right. Using the other side of the box, we'll draw the parallel line from the station point out to the horizon line and drop that point down to the horizon line. This becomes our vanishing point left. You'll note that we've taken one of the planes of the box and slid it down until it touches the picture plane. That allows us to have a point of true measurement. We'll drop a line there all the way down to the ground line and call it the measurement line. That's the point where the box touches the picture plane, therefore it's the point of true measurement. We'll also then draw lines from the station point to each of the corners of the box. What's important is where any of those touch the picture plane, because everything touches the picture plane at true measurement. And then we'll drop those points down as well. Now we have the measurement line, and we have each of the corners of the box drop down through the horizon line to the ground line. The last thing we want to do is take the true measurement of the box, draw it over until it hits the measurement line. At that point, we will vanish it off to its vanishing point left and draw a line to represent the corner of that box on the center point right where our station point is and then we will vanish both of those off to the vanishing point left and the vanishing point right. Ending those on the lines that we've dropped point down to the other corners of the box, and then we'll vanish the top of those off as well. There is our perspective view of the box using all the drop points. If we remove all the lines, we now have a perspective view of that box that we now see from the front, superimposed over the picture of the ground plan 